article appears to be an email written to a journalist and is signed off by Tom Bearden. The content of the article discusses the use of scalar potential interferometry by the KGB for weather manipulation. The author also provides several examples of this technology being used and mentions specific incidents and dates. He also provides the names of scientific papers and theories related to the technology being discussed in the article. The author also emphasizes the importance of looking for factual information such as names and events in articles to verify the credibility of the source. Even so, I am still unable to confirm that this article is definitely from Tom Bearden, but there is indeed such a person and I can even find videos about him on YouTube. Tom Bearden is a retired lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army and a former professor at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. He is known for his work on theoretical physics and energy technology, particularly in the field of scalar electromagnetics, a controversial area of physics that is not widely accepted by the mainstream scientific community. He has also written several books on the subject, including Excalibur Briefing and Ferdelance. Here's how the weather engineering is usually accomplished. First, take two scalar potential beam transmitters, separated on the necessary baseline to form a beam interferometer. Let them interfere at a distance. Now in that distant interference zone, IZ, there is an ambient vacuum potential, spacetime potential, or spacetime stress. If the electrical circuit grounds of the interferometer transmitters are biased above the ambient potential in the IZ, then scattering EM energy, heating, emerges in the IZ. This is the exothermic mode of operation. If the electrical circuit grounds of the interferometer are biased negatively below the ambient potential in the IZ, then convergent EM energy, cooling, emerges in the IZ. This is the endothermic mode of operation. There is one other characteristic that one needs to be aware of. Pure longitudinal EM waves have infinite speed and infinite velocity, see the summary papers by Rodriguez et al. on the Los Alamos National Laboratory website. In practice one makes a pseudo-longitudinal wave, so its energy is finite and its speed is finite, but it may have a velocity v is c. A scalar potential is not a scalar entity at all. Instead, it's a bundle of bidirectional longitudinal waves, as shown by Whitaker 1903. Focus the interference zone, IZ on the other side of the Earth, beam right through the Earth and ocean, to a given desired area in the atmosphere. Bias your transmitters positively. You produce atmospheric heating in the air in the IZ, so that the air expands and you have produced a low pressure zone. Now use a second interferometer biased negatively, and place it at a distant IZ desired. In that IZ, you cool the air so that it shrinks and becomes denser, and you have created a high pressure area. Now place several such IZs, with the desired highs and lows, near a jet stream. The jet stream will be deviated toward a low and away from a high. By varying the transmitted energy in the IZ location, just move it gradually along, you can entrain and steer the jet streams, and therefore effectively steer the resulting weather. Want to spawn tornadoes? Just make several sharp bends in the jet streams, and also speed them up a bit. The additional angular momentum imparted to the air masses will spawn off Littler rotations, tornadoes. By focusing the IZ underneath the ocean, one can heat or cool the water in a selected area, over a period of time. So you can aggravate or ease El Nino, e.g. By proper steering and coordination around the Earth, the KGB is able to create a great deal of rain in an area, a drought in an area, storms and tornadoes, a powerful El Nino, etc. Incidentally, the KGB weapon scientists call the enfolded LWs, curvatures of ST, inside electrodynamics, the information content of the field. Our guys just think they are referring to spectral analysis. The Russians call the entire science energetics. You can see the earlier version of the Rodriguez paper in Foundations of Physics, 27, 3, 1997, pages 435 to 508. Whitaker's papers are on an expression of the electromagnetic field due to electrons by means of two scalar potential functions, PROC, London. Math. SOC, Series 2, Volume 1, 1904, pages 367 to 372, etc. The anomalous weather worldwide is not accidental. In superpotential theory, which was initiated by a paper by E.T. In 1904, it was possible to produce EM force fields and force field energy at a distance. 
Whitaker 1904 showed that all EM fields and waves can be decomposed into two scalar potential functions. It follows that, by assembling two such scalar potential functions in beams, one can produce a scalar potential interferometer where the potential beams intersect at a distance. In that interference zone, ordinary transverse EM fields and energy appear. One can engineer clusters of ST curvatures, by proper assembly of LWs. This is a very powerful general relativity, because the strong EM force is being used as the agent of ST curvature. This particular EMGR does not appear in the textbooks, but has been utilized by the Russian KGB in clandestine weapon development since the 1950s. You can see what might happen if one also toys around with a sleeping volcano. On July 4, 1976 the KGB began its massive and continuing weather engineering over North America. It continues to this day. As an example, on November 19, 1997 I drove from Huntsville, Alabama to Louisville, Kentucky to give a graduate seminar on November 20. As I left Nashville on the interstate, I spotted a giant radial cloud in the sky to my left. A giant radial is a cloud with long radial fingers, spokes, radiating out from it, perhaps several miles in length. These are signatures of artificial weather engineering. On Interstate 65, I was averaging about 65 miles per hour. So was the giant radial, and it was traveling along off to the left of I-65. In other words, the distant operators were just using a map with I-65 as a trace guideline for moving an interferometer array's IZ. That cloud moved right along with me, at 65 miles per hour, for 111 miles by my odometer. Then it started to fade as the distant operator cut power. At that time, I could see its twin off to the right, which had been cut off a little before. This was therefore one of the infamous twin giant radials that I photographed so much back in the early 80s. The article ends here. The article is full of professional physics terms, or related to meteorology, which is difficult for ordinary people to understand. According to the text, the article was published on May 26, 1998, and describes how the Soviet Union used feasible physical technology to develop climate weapons. I don't have a professional background to understand these proprietary terms, and according to the article, it looks feasible. The motivation was also clear at that time. However, based on the reality of the world in 2023, it seems that Russia may have forgotten the technology it may have had in the past. This also makes me think of how NASA recently explained that, for various reasons, they forgot the moon landing technology at that time, and it's quite similar. If this article is true, I just heard a blogger recently, explaining the economic development of human history, almost always cyclical. Each cycle will go through four stages, bud, plain, disaster, and burnt earth. In the third stage of disaster, some people will make money from frequent disasters. For example, if an outbreak occurs in an area and causes most people to be infected, the first is that vaccine developed by the pharmaceutical factory will be profitable, and related drugs and preventive materials will also be. If a serious infection causes a large number of deaths, the next is the funeral-related industry to start earning. So, some people will doubt whether these events are caused by humans. This simple reasoning looks like a reasonable motivation, but ultimately there is no evidence. If you like the thoughts this video brings to you, please help us press like, subscribe and turn on the little bell.